Hey guys, what is up? And in this video, I'm going to be going over all the parts needed to build a very solid $1,000 gaming PC capable of playing almost any new title at 1440p 60fps. Now before I jump straight into the build, I would like to give a shout out to a friend of mine for providing some of the gameplay used in this video. So if you want to check out his channel, I'll be sure to link it in the description down below along with all the parts in this build. So without wasting any more time, let's jump straight into the build. So kicking the build off of the CPU, I chose to go with the AMD Ryzen 5 1600. Now, even though Intel recently came out with the Coffee Lake CPUs, I still feel like AMD has the edge in terms of budget performance CPUs. With the Ryzen 5 1600, you have a total of six cores with 12 threads, which is definitely gonna help you when it comes to productivity, like video editing and stuff like that, that can make use of all those extra cores and threads. It also comes clocked in at 3.2 gigahertz, which, you know, that's pretty standard, but it does have a max turbo speed of 3.6 gigahertz. And like I said before, it comes with the Wraith Spire cooler, which is actually a pretty decent cooler, so you shouldn't have any troubles there. In fact, this is actually an unlocked CPU, so what I'd recommend is actually going with this over the 1600X, and then maybe if you feel you need a little bit of extra performance, you can always overclock it a little bit, and you should be fine with the included cooler. And overall, this is just a very solid CPU, especially if you want to get into video editing and productivity work, and, you know, it's also great for gaming, which is really what this gaming PC is built for. Now moving over to storage, I chose to go with both an SSD and a hard drive for this build because once you get past that six, seven hundred, eight hundred dollar price point, you really should have an SSD in your build. And in case you're new to PC building, essentially when you're using an SSD and a hard drive, you use the standard hard drive for mass storage. So that would be like all of your games, your movies, your music, and then for your SSD, you install Windows on it along with any programs that you frequently use, and that's going to help make everything feel a lot snappier. And speaking of the SSD, I chose to go with the Samsung 850 EVO 250GB solid state drive. It's got read and write speeds up to 540 megabytes per second, and I've actually used this in my own personal build, and even after three years, it's still going strong, so I can definitely recommend it to you guys. And it's one of the most popular SSDs out there, so it's definitely a good choice. Now for mass storage, I chose to go with the Western Digital Blue one terabyte hard drive, and at $50, this is really a solid option. I've used these in all my builds so far and I've never had an issue with any of them. And at 7200 RPM with 64 megabytes of cache, they perform very well for standard hard drives. And again, at $50, this is just a no brainer in a build like this. Now for the graphics card, I chose to go with the Zotac GeForce GTX 1070 Mini for $390. Now, graphics cards are arguably the most important part of a PC build, so I wanted to use a large chunk of our budget on it, and I feel like in a $1,000 build, the 1070 fits in really nicely. It comes with 8GB of VRAM, a base clock of 1518 MHz with a boost clock of 1708 MHz, and in terms of ports, you've got three DisplayPort 1.4s, one HDMI 2.0, and one dual link DVI. Now with all of that being said, let's get to the interesting part, the performance. At 1080p ultra settings, this card is an absolute beast. You can expect an average of 90 FPS or over on most games out there, including Battlefield 1, Star Wars Battlefront, and of course, GTA 5. Now, of course, there are gonna be some exceptions to that, so some games like Player Unknown's Battlegrounds that aren't optimized as well will hover around that 60 or so FPS mark. However, where this card really shines is when it comes to 1440p. At 1440p, you can expect over 60 FPS on most any game out there, which is very impressive. Overall, this card is a really good option if you wanna get into like VR or 1440p gaming, but you don't wanna break the bank. Now for RAM, I chose to go with a single stick of Crucial Ballistic Sport LT memory. 8GB for $90 is very expensive, but as of right now, unfortunately this was the best deal I could find. And I remember about a year to two years ago, I actually bought 8GB of RAM and it was only about $35, so judging by that, you can probably tell prices have gone through the roof recently 
which is why I'm only recommending that you get one stick of eight gigabytes. So in the future, if you ever wanna upgrade to 16 gigabytes and when prices come down, you always have that option to purchase another stick of this RAM and then you can just pop it in and you'll be good to go. It's an easy upgrade and it's gonna save you a lot of money in the long run if you buy just eight gigabytes right now. I should mention that it is clocked in at 2400 megahertz, so it's gonna perform pretty well. And although this may not matter to you, you do have the option to go with either red or white if that's something you're interested in. Now moving right along to the motherboard, I chose to go with the ASRock AB350M Pro 4 motherboard. Now when you're searching for a motherboard, you always want to be aware of two things. First, you want to be aware of compatibility, and obviously all the parts I picked for this build are compatible with this motherboard, which is going to make it really easy because they'll all be ready to go right out of the box. But you also want to be aware of features, and I feel like at $75, this motherboard strikes a good balance between features and price. Now with this, you've got support for dual M.2 SSDs, so if you really want to take it a step further and go for the fastest possible storage out there, you have that option as well as support for USB Type-C and support for up to 64 gigabytes of RAM, which is way more than you'll ever need in a build like this. And although it's not nearly as important as what I previously mentioned, it does come with a nice white and black color scheme. So if that's what you're going for, then this is just an added bonus. And it's also gonna nicely match the case I picked for this build. Now, speaking of the case, I chose to go with the Inwin 301 for this build. Now at $65, this is a very solid value. You're getting a case made out of steel with a tempered glass side panel window that almost covers the entire side of the case. You also have an LED IO display on the front, which although it's not that important, it adds a cool touch to the case. And it is micro ATX, which means it is gonna be a lot more compact than your standard mid tower case, which also means cable management might be a little bit more difficult, but I also chose to go with a semi-modular power supply, which definitely should help a little bit with cable management. Now in terms of cooling, you've got support for two 120mm fans on the front, one 120mm fan on the back, and two on the bottom. So overall, it's just a very good value, and I would definitely recommend it for this build. Now for the power supply, I chose to go with the Corsair CS 650M. Now this is a semi-modular power supply, which means cable management is going to be easier using this than something that's not modular. On top of that, it's 650 watts, which should be plenty for this build, and it should even leave you some room for upgrades in the future if you ever want to upgrade something. On top of that, it's also 80 plus gold certified, making it 92% energy efficient, which is definitely gonna help a bit with power consumption. And at $69, this is a solid option. You always wanna make sure you go with a reputable brand like Corsair or EVGA when purchasing a power supply. Power supplies are one of those parts that you really don't wanna try and save any money on. Just go for the best, most reliable one you can get. And in this case, this is just a great option. Anyway guys, that pretty much wraps it up for this video. Let me know if you end up building the PC and let me know how it goes in the comments section below. And if you guys have any questions at all about this build, I'll be happy to answer them in the comments section down below. But anyway guys, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.